speed to succeed at the IMO, you need these three different factors. The first one is the knowledge, so the theory, theory, everything. The second one is the tips you just mentioned, the strategies. And the third part is just, you know, being smart and, and, and creative. Which percentage would you give to each one of these parts? Meet Malaysia's top math prodigy with five IMO medals, including two golds, a true force on the world stage. In the IMO specifically, theory, I would say that it is very low. If I can assign a number. Okay, let's say, let's say that it, it's very, very different for different levels. For example, um, to get a bronze medal, to get a silver medal, to get a gold medal, to get a perfect score. I believe that they are very different percentages. But for now, let's say that um, just the gold medal. Um, I would say that the theory part is almost like 10 or 15%. But that, I can't really quantify that thing. But that's a big sense of the relativity between those, those several ideas. So 10 to 15%. And the idea, and the reason is because IMO over the years, a lot of years already, they use very minimal theory. If you compare it with, um, even if USA TST or USA TST ST, or even the Malaysian IMO TST, or the Taiwanese Math Olympiad training process, and also the China TST, for example, like all these TST, they have way more theory involved in it compared to the IMO. IMO is one of the ones in a very difficult level, but at the same time only require um, minimal theory among other math Olympic content. So I would say assign a 10 to 15% for that. And about tips, tips I would say that uh, as in those general intuition, I feel like intuition is a very important part. I wouldn't say tips, but intuition, there are two types, like one that I can actually write down and maybe I call those tips and one that I can't really vocalize and I call those intuition. And in general, I feel like these two together constitutes like at least 60 or 70 percent and the rest is the natural kind of smartness kind of thing but at the highest level i realized that there are stuff that and inevitably we need to have some time management skills that's one of the crew um one of the things i've learned in the last few years actually you could solve it as in we are there we can solve it within let's say 10 hours but how to do that in four and a half hours is a totally different thing so we need to increase the speed and also, there's a lot of meta skills. Like for example, if I've been stuck in P2 for three hours, so considering that I have never been stuck in P2 for three hours, so maybe I'm really missing something important. So that was something that I wish I knew earlier, but okay, at least now I've learned my lesson in the very last IMO, but still a lesson. So there, there are these kind of, um, you can see that they are totally unrelated to math, for example. It's not about pigeonhole principle, LTE or anything like that. It's like, if you can't solve a problem for so long, then perhaps um, there's something important that I'm missing. And when he was asked about how much time he would spend working on problems a day. It really depends on how interesting that problem is. But I would say that averagely every day, I spend at least like three to four hours minimal. And in the past few, year, um, past few years, during my high school years, then seven to eight would be the norm. When he was asked about how he can spend that much time solving math problems. I think it's very common for all math Olympiad people. Right. So the teacher will be teaching history or geography and you'll be solving problems. Yep, my Chinese textbooks is full of like geometry diagrams. 